right, Karen. The floor is yours. Um, I guess my question is, did you reach a conclusion? I, I think I left early on Thursday, right, about whether you want to have a single documentation for everything. Um, I don't think we made a decision. Okay. Because, like, I looked at the documentation on the website again this morning, just because of the discussion, and I think I was arguing against a single documentation yesterday, at least a bit. And uh, also, I think Humberto like wrote to me and asked some questions. And like looking at that, I ended up thinking that yeah, maybe a single documentation is the right way to go, and maybe it is the thing that forces us to like break or or get away from the effect of our documentation looking like we're all a bunch of little mini teams, which is which we are, uh, and which I think uh, Brian said yesterday that there's a law that your documentation ends up looking like your organization is organized, or was it Ina? I don't remember. Um, and and of course it's all not all or nothing. So like I think at a minimum not like there should only be one documentation that is a non-content plugin documentation if that makes sense so like maybe it's okay for a content plugin to have its own documentation for its content specific workflows but like should each installation method have its own documentation and uh, some of the installation is in in pub core and some of it's on the website that that seems like those should definitely be consolidated. There should only be one place to look about how to install Pope. Yes. I agree. 100%. Like, <laughs> it's and it can have different sections. It can have a section for mm -hmm. operator and one for OCI images and one for, what is it, compose. But it has to be one place. <laughs> Yep. And then like, for example, CLI also, CLI should it have its completely own documentation or should it be no, part the, of the it, installation? It should be just part of the documentation. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, right now it's really the Git repositories drive the federation of the documentation, right? Each Git repository has its own documentation. Website. Totally. Yeah. Um, I was, I was th thinking this over some yesterday, um, and and maybe I should stop myself. Actually, I think what I'm about to start talking about is like, how do we get there? But you know, maybe this is a better time for us to actually pull the room in terms of goal formation. Um, but I do have some comments in terms of how we get there, or at least ways that I know that we can't get there. Well, the one thought I've had on like how to get there is maybe leave the plugin, like the content plugin documentations for last. Like start consolidating all that other stuff. And if if we get through that, then we can get to the more. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I think consolidating the installation methods is a, an achievable goal. Like. <laughs> It, it, it's something that we can definitely get done without like one person can do that. Like combining all the documentation for all the plugins is going to be a, you know, many people working together, but consolidating the installation methods, that's like one person can do that. And so then the question is where, where is this consolidated documentation? supposed to live. Docs.pulpproject.org. I mean, I have a question. Why do we have two different websites? What's the difference supposed to be between pull project and docs.pulpproject? Yeah, so we have I uh, I have history 
information for you. I don't have like, this was a great idea answer for you. Um, we have two websites because um, we, we wanted a project web property, which is what pulpproject.org is. Um, and that web property was not, you know, we weren't able to have that single web property posted on our original docs hosting site, which was read the docs with like a simple domain name and a blog. And so it's mostly due to technology differences. Like the pulpproject.org was built with Jekyll. Um, and then, and it, and it only hosts one version, which is like the project site. And then like off to the side, that other, you know, having all these doc sites is primarily driven around, you know, originally we didn't want to be in the business of building and publishing those docs and hosting those docs. Later we got into that business. But I think the big difference is it has like a zillion versions behind each component. And Jekyll as a technology wasn't able to do that well in the amount of time we could spend on it this is a really stupid this is a crappy answer uh but that's how we got here yeah that makes sense so is the goal in the consolidation to fix this past mistake and move down to or try to move closer to just one single website? I think that would be a, a wonderful goal. Yep. Yeah. I mean, at this point, and, and, and it's something we could do now that we really didn't want to do before, but like those assumptions have changed. Like I mentioned, we didn't want to be in the business of hosting, building, and hosting. And now we are. So like from a effort from an effort perspective, I think consolidating them is something we're in a position to do now, like we, were, we weren't before. Does that mean the docs really live on the website? So that the consolidated part of the docs really lives on the website, or does it, or is it okay to have one docs repo that publishes a read the docs style documentation with all the consolidated stuff? I would say that there's still value in keeping the docs in each repo so you can submit docs changes with the uh, repo changes if possible. Maybe have it pull in when you publish to the website pull in. You know, I don't know if it's technically possible. Yes, I mean, this anything is, is technically possible, but it's like the cost. What is the cost of doing it? And I think we are looking for low cost solutions. De Dennis and I had a debate yesterday. Dennis basically pitched what you just said, David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I and I took the other side. Um, uh, pulp, pulp does. Uh, you know, we make things, and everyone does. Not even to pulp. We make things complicated. And what I'm, what I'm really, really hoping for is something that's just simple. Like part of like the reason why people don't know how to contribute docs is because like it's in a zillion places and the formats are all different and like how do they build? I don't know. Like, wait, you have to check out some module. Like, I, ah, um, <laughs> like let's just have one okay. doc repo. Uh, what if we... make it easy? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm hearing all this. Um, what if we start putting docs in pulpproject.org repo? Well, I think that it comes with the major downside that David was just talking about, you know, so of which of which also resonates with me too. I don't mean to I don't mean to downplay it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see benefits and downsides to each. If it's a separate repo, then I have to go and check out this other repo if I want to make a docs change along with my change. And I would like for the docs change to not go out until my change goes out. So that's kind of a problem. But at the same time having all the docs in one repo. So we're like, oh, well, the docs are all in this one repo. repo. I know where they are, you know? Yeah, it's really tough, like, because we don't release all the things at the same time. 
it's hard to know like when is it appropriate for these <laughs> oh man mono repo yeah so it, yeah it's just hard to know when you're supposed to publish these docs can we start with baby steps what matthias yeah. suggested to overcome the fear and uncertainty of how do i contribute to the docs we write the docs or how to contribute to the docs it still doesn't answer the question how to structure and, and what repos to organize mm -hmm. them but at least it will help people to figure out how do i make a contribution in this so area what what's the first baby step sorry to add oh. docs how to add docs yeah. <laughs> are we going to add docs if we don't know how to add docs though we need docs for those docs <laughs> <laughs> the exception. So, um, I mean, I was, I was, I was pitching a different strategy. I was basically pitching a. This might sound radical. I was pitching. Don't even. Don't even try to take our current docs with us. Don't even try to, like, literally, like a fre a total fresh start. And here is my. Here is my claim or my belief and this could be totally wrong um our docs are really in a bad state and we can pull from them with low cost into a new site but the cost of fixing the content that we have right now is so high that we would do better just to like basically do a total fresh start. It would be cheaper. And that's what I'm saying. Let's just start putting everything in pulpproject.org repo. It'll be yeah, fresh. But, but I mean, I, yeah, but I'm going back to, um, you know, if that's my mindset, should we document our current approach? I would say no. Um, that's just my opinion. Is, I hope you're not suggesting to start the docs from scratch. Maybe for English native speaker, it's as easy to write that many docs as we have today in a very short amount of time. I mean, I hope that you meant we start from fresh and we still do copy paste. Yeah, yeah, we I still, mean, do, we still do copy paste. Content. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we definitely not like total brand new, like 100% novel authorship. But, you know, think of the problem, like position the problem, like, I literally need to think, does this section even make sense anymore? And the idea is, if the answer is not, I've thought about it, and it's yes, it doesn't get brought in. So what's the difference? You're anyway going to get grab for the things, and you would whether move them over or delete them, versus you would still do git grab look at the existing structure and figure out whether you remove or keep it. I mean, my, my belief again, like to totally be wrong here, but where I'm coming from is that, um, taking our mountain of docs and going through them and transforming them incrementally towards a cohesive user focused site is extremely expensive and tedious but creating a new site that has a structure informed by, I don't have the link to Pedro's um, site from, oh, actually I do. Um, you know, like if we think more holistically about what are great user focused docs, what's the right amount of them and all that kind of stuff and um, write those by pulling sections. It's just a lower, it's a lower mental effort. It's a lower, total effort, I think overall could be totally wrong about that. And one thing I did mean to say, like if I sounded overly negative about the docs, there are a lot of good pulp docs, bits and pieces. So like that would be compatible with your approach because you, you copy the good parts. And I think there are a lot of great pulp docs. The problem is like, structure and finding finding the bit you need at any given point in time 
And so, so maybe just start with a blank slate in one place and then add good things to it incrementally is easier than, I don't know, fixing them in place. That would be my intuition as well. But I haven't quite understood what that place is. So pulpproject.org is a repository that already exists? Uh, pulpproject.org is a C name that points to um, a GitHub pages is actually what, back, what backs it. Um, and GitHub performs um, building, and the building is run by this technology called Jekyll. Um, but docs.pullproject.org is also a series of C names um, that point to uh, a web host that we control. And so if we wanted to port the web property over in some way, we could do that. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question, Kieran. Um, I guess because Dennis said, like, let's just have one new place or one new repository at Pulp, or is it a new repository or is it an existing? It already exists. There's a, pro uh, there's a repository called pulpproject.org. Okay. And what's in it right now? I put now? it in the chat, Kieran. I put it yeah. in the chat. Okay. Yeah. What's in it is a bunch in of blog um, posts, YAML files and a theme and it runs on this thing called Jekyll. Okay. I do not think we want to make Jekyll our main docs builder technology. I think we want to use um, MK docs. MK docs. Yeah, and th that's fine. Um, yep. So Jekyll just serves, I think, um, pages. If you um, create uh, markdown pages, and just put it into Jekyll, I think, but whatever. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually, Jekyll performs building, which oh. produces static HTML output, and then web servers just serve that. All right. And, and this is, is what MK GitHub Docs? Pages does. MK Docs is a, is a building technology that similarly uses Markdown as its input. You know, like Jekyll uses YAML. Mm -hmm. um, Markdown, uh, MK Docs uses Markdown. MKDocs performs building by reading in the markdown, applying all your theme, and produces HTML. And then that HTML can just be served up wherever. And do any of the existing docs already use this? Or or why is that yes. the? Uh, a few of them do. Um, but some of the plugins, which I forget which ones, but I know at least one or two have switched to MKDocs. I've always hated RST, so getting rid of that I think would be great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, that is a broad goal. The developers, I think, have said, like, we don't want to do any more RST writing. Do you know which plugin? So I can have a look at what MKDocs um, looks like. I got to go Does look. the CLI use MKDocs? Or is it the pulp operator? I know Fabrizio converted one. Uh, yeah, I see Scylla no. uses uh, MK Docs. Yeah. But Matisse is the one who set it up, so. Yeah, and Pulp Installer used to use it as well. So you can see this link here. This is the installer. Oh, the operator uses it. Okay, we can get a link to the operator. But notice, like in this pulp installer link, there's no Sphinx. There's no Sphinx involved here, um, like there is with almost all the other sites, which use Sphinx to perform building.
And does that still like store multiple versions of the pulp installer docs? Yeah, so the docs live on branch branches, um, you know, where each branch represents its version. And then uh, there's a publishing job in the CI for each branch that places in a, in a folder structure that has on the web host that has the the um, version number as part of it. And so the differencing in the docs per version is captured in Git. And then those differences are represented after those docs are built with um, folders on the web host. Okay. On the CLI docs, Matthias recently added a uh, version selector. On the top left, you can click on it and then choose different versions, and it will then serve the version from the corresponding Git branch. Mm, yeah. And that's not things? Or that's that looks like things? This is uh, make this is make docs. We're just using the read the docs theme. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I think the one thing that's really hard with the docs with the one doc site is having all the versions there. I mean, like we, I I don't have a plan for that. Um, I, I just don't. Um, I, I know that's roughly where we want to get to. I know we need to have a plan for that, but I don't have one. Yeah. Well, I guess it really depends on what's the big difference between our different versions. Um, so like in Pulp CLI, I'm almost never going to be looking at the previous version of, of docs. Um, our commands, they're already version separated. So like you can't use previous command if you don't have the versions. Um, so maybe it doesn't make much sense to storing these old versions. Um, if we are updating the docs and a version or something changes, then we should probably just document it inside the documents instead of having separate docs across versions. But like installation docs, you do need to be version specific probably, right? Well, I think Jared's, set, Jared's suggesting a strategy where if you absolutely need version differences, you you have a single, you like call them out in the doc in the docs. So like when you publish the new version, it's like use you know if you're on old version, you should do this. If you're on new version, you should do that. And the idea I think is that that's really not important in almost all cases. And so the number of times we really need that is very low. Yeah. And um, in some docs, I find people write. Uh, whenever a feature is described, it says like what version it got introduced in. And I think this goes back to a general theme of like we've made a really comp we've made a really complicated thing, and so I'm not surprised that the contribution process is really complicated. Um, like there are all these versions, there are all these. Yeah. Um, basically, all we get almost no documentation contributions. We get more code contributions than documentation contributions, which should be the other way around. Hey, so people practically, want to get involved. Yeah. practically speaking, I feel like uh, we'll need to have like a group, um, mm -hmm. working group. Uh, I'm not sure what you want to call it, but you know, folks who feel connected to this conversation and um, and want to help guide it, I think should find some time to meet regularly. Um, David? I just had a suggestion. I've seen on like other, for other projects when I go to like their doc site, in the top right hand corner, they have like these edit on GitHub links for each page and you can just click that. That would be a great suggestion or 
future to have for both yes. companies. I agree. I don't know how you do that, but I think we should do that. <laughs> All right, yeah, so we're, we're going to have a working group. And like, I'm really interested in this. Like, I definitely want to be part of this working group. Um, so as uh, the way we typically form working groups is we declare that they're going to form on discourse. And then we ask people to self-identify. And one person hosts an open meeting that anyone can come to. Cool. Um, like, for instance, there are maybe people who are on this call who want to join mm -hmm. in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, is someone willing to take the action item to create that discourse post and set up a um, a single meeting, maybe for like a kickoff meeting for next week? Yep. Let's do it. I'll do it. I'll make a post. Um, yeah. I just posted the link how you can make that edit uh, link with MK Docs. Okay. So. All right. Well, I think uh, that wraps up this activity. I'm going to stop recording at this time. Um, one. Do you want me to stop uh, recording or no? No, <laughs> I want to say something. Uh, I'm just like quickly trying to get to the information. Um, one thing is we've talked about these web properties. Uh, OK, I'm not able to find it. Um, or maybe I am, uh, anyways, we have analytics running on these sites and they get, I'm not able to find the analytics data too quick, quickly enough. Um, so pulpproject.org and the doc sites get thousands of users per month, um, in terms of, in terms of traffic. So I just want to call out that like, this is an important activity. Um, and, and that's what I wanted to share. That's cool. Awesome. All right. I'm stopping the recording now.